Hey, New Hope family, thank you for joining us for this Sunday evening online experience. So glad to be together with you and uh, uh, so thankful for technology that allows us to do this. Even though we can't meet together in the building, we can gather together online and uh, know that we're sharing this experience together. Whether you're watching at home on your laptop, iPad, your TV, your cell phone, whatever it might be, I know that there are so many of us gathered together. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, just take a minute to uh, say hello in the comments section below and uh, connect with uh, those who are gathered together there just to let us know that you're joining us and that you're part of that. We had a great time this weekend with our drive through prayer. It's so great to see so many of you, uh, to be able to have some short conversations and pray with you, and um, just great to see people. And so we're looking forward to the time when we can gather back together. Just be praying that that time would come soon, that a, uh, a cure for this virus uh, would be found, that a, a sure treatment would be found that uh, would treat people who have the virus so that there wouldn't be the fear of catching the virus. I know there's been so many, so much uh, difficulty in these days, but I know that there's been a lot of great things that have come out of this. We've enjoyed time as a family uh, at, at mealtime at home, just about every evening and uh, time around the table, playing games together, watching shows together. It's just been a great time to, uh, to reconnect with family. And I know that can be challenging for some, uh, but uh, we, um, we're so thankful for what God has in store and uh, just praying that this all passes soon. Uh, now that we're seven weeks into it, and praying for a change. I want to share with you just a, a few thoughts this evening from the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, a very common verse of scripture that most of you, I'm sure, have memorized. Philippians 4.13 that says, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. When he says that phrase, I, I know that there's some people who think maybe that would mean that I could wake up tomorrow morning and just think, I want to run a race. And I think I'll run a marathon, 26.2 miles. And even though I haven't trained for it, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength, right? Or maybe if I think that's strong enough, can I get out on a court with um, a basketball and some and be able to play and hold my own with some of the greats of the great NBA players because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Years ago, I tried to water ski and it was really kind of my initiation into Jeannie's family. And uh, the truth is three or four days when I met her family, they took me to the lake and uh, we tried to water ski probably five or six, seven times each time. I probably drank more water out of that lake um, and uh, nearly drowned. I spent more time under the water than on top of the water. Never did I get out of the water on skis. Well, years later, when we lived in Montana, we lived near a couple of ski resorts and I tried snow skiing and I had a dream the night before that maybe I, I, I was thinking maybe I'd be a prodigy because you know, I could envision myself just cutting back and forth, going down the hill, like I'd seen all these Olympic uh, skiers do. And I was just thinking, at least I stand, I start on top of the, uh, of the, of the snow, and I don't have to get out of water. And so, all these visions and dreams that I had, thinking I could do this, the reality was it was a real reality check. And it's amazing that our relationship survived that day. Uh, because I was so frustrated with myself. I unfortunately took it out on Jeannie. We did have a couple of uh, fights and she kind of went off and skied on her own for a while because I just I had just had enough. And um, uh, the rest of the story is that I did learn how to snow ski. But the truth is, is that that's not what Paul intended in this phrase, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Paul, as he's writing to uh, the uh, Philippian church, uh, they had experienced some struggles and some failures in at least three different fronts. In chapter four, we gives us insight into those three, three things, uh, which all find their resolve in this verse, Philippians 4.13, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. The first thing that Paul talks about is relationships. And in this letter to the Philippian church, he'd, he didn't confront the, the Philippians on doctrinal errors. There just wasn't issues that way. But he did address relational problems. Some of them weren't getting along. They couldn't resolve their conflicts. Listen to what it says in verse 2 and 3 of Philippians chapter 4. He says, Now I appeal to you, Euodia and Syntyche. Those are some interesting names. Please, because you belong to the Lord, 
settle your disagreements. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. So these women who were followers of Jesus, they were committed to the cause of the gospel of Jesus, but something had come between them. And Paul knew that their relationship had to be reconciled. And so I wonder at this point, uh, how many of us have relationships that need to be reconciled? You have a conflict, something that you can't resolve with maybe a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, uh, a family member, and you just need to resolve that. The, the reality is, is while we're quarantining and self-isolating, we're spending more time together as a family than we ever have before, and that can put some strain on relationships. So I want to encourage you, and as it, as it uh, pertains to your relationships, don't let that tension build to an explosion. And, and don't just ignore it thinking that it's going to dissolve and resolve with time. Find some help. Find someone who is a peacemaker that can help you sort that out. But the, remember, the context is this. I can do everything through Christ who gives me the strength. The second thing that Paul mentions here is attitudes. The Philippian church had allowed anxieties and fear to control their lives. You see, wrong thinking leads to wrong feelings. And before long, our heart and our mind are pulled in different directions. And next thing you know, we are strangled with worry, with fear, and with anxiety. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Paul goes on to say in Philippians 4, 8, he says this, Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So there's something about our thinking, and the, the reality is our thoughts are real and powerful, even though you can't see them or measure them. What we put into our minds determines what comes out in our words and our actions. Paul tells us that we need to program our minds with thoughts that are true, that are right, that are pure, that are lovely, admirable, excellent, and worthy of praise. So if you struggle with impure thoughts, if you struggle with worry or fear or anxiety, take inventory of what you're putting into your mind. You see, we need to ask ourselves this question, what are we watching? And how much are we watching? What are we watching on TV? What are we watching as far as movies? What are we watching on the internet? What are we reading in books? You see, these things have an effect on our mind and our attitudes and our feelings. One recent poll just released this week by an organization called Parents Together shows that nearly half of children in the U.S. have spent at least six hours a day online since this coronavirus pandemic. That's compared to 8% before all of this happened which is over a 500% increase. You see, we're all getting a lot more input into our brains and we need to be careful about what we're putting in. We need to replace negative, harmful input with wholesome material. I've, I've talked to many who say, I've just become so frustrated and so overwhelmed by watching the news. You see, I think we need to stay informed, but there needs to be balance. We've made it a point in our home to, to turn off the TV at times. Uh, we have chosen to worship, uh, stream worship music through YouTube. Um, we watch movies that uh, we choose uh, that have Christian values. Um, one of the things that uh, we, we try to watch, and I would, can't say enough about this resource, is Right Now Media. There's so much good content in right now media teaching on a variety uh, of levels and if you're not connected to right now media please do so even right now if you can pull out your phone or your laptop get onto our website newhope.church click on the button that talks about right now media and go sign up it's free we pay for this resource so that you all can be part of that for free and there is content on there uh, there are, uh, content for kids for teenagers there's preaching series there's studies in the books of the bible on, on apologetics on everyday christian living and again it's a free resource to you we provide that for you we want you to take advantage of that uh, tell your friends tell your family I, I hope that you're getting our daily devotional videos that 
input from our pastors. There's great encouragement, thoughts and teachings from the Bible. Uh, we need to fix our thoughts on what's true and what's on what's what what is right and what is pure. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, that as Christians who are filled with the Spirit of God, we're able to take captive our thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. Again, Paul says, I can do everything through Christ who gives me, th me strength. The third thing Paul addresses in Philippians 4 is contentment. We need to learn how to be content with whatever we have. This is what he says in verse 11 and 12. He says, I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or with nothing. I've learned the secret, he said. I've learned how to be content. And he's learned that by experience. His secret of being content was relying on God's promises to draw him closer to Christ through his power in his life. He concludes chapter four and the letter in Philippians by saying this, this same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs according to his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. So when you think there's no way that this relationship will ever survive, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When you think uh, things will never be the same that they were, they'll never be back the way that they used to be, and you're just filled with anxiety and, and with worry and with doubt, remember, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. When you begin to measure your life by what you have or you don't have, remember, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. It doesn't mean that it's always going to be easy, and there's uh, such truth and hope in this statement. but. Here's an experience that Paul shares with us uh, where he, he was put to the test. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. And he says this, So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to, to torment me. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That is why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul calls this thorn a messenger from Satan. Let me just take a side note here and talk about what the Bible says about Satan. The Bible says that Satan is an accuser. He's a deceiver, a tormentor. His entire role in life is to hurt, to destroy, to cause pain, and ultimately death. John 10.10 10 says that he is a thief, and the thief has come only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. Satan is an accuser, he's a deceiver, he's a tormentor, he's a liar, he's the father of all lies, and he is a thief, but he is limited in his role. He can only do what God allows, which would only be for the ultimate good of his children. The very torment of his thorn, given by Paul to Paul by Satan, in the hands of God, becomes something which gives great spiritual blessing. That's amazing insight that what was intended by Satan to harm Paul, God used it for good. I want to leave you with three thoughts to remember. And if you have a chance to write these down, that'd be great. Number one, uh, remember the one who is in control. God is in control. Paul saw the providence of God who perpetually creates good out of evil. God's love for you is so great there is nothing that compares to his love. It far outseeds anything that we've ever experienced as far as earthly love. God always acts out of love and kindness toward us. And he will never allow you to go through anything that will not ultimately bring him glory and you good in the end. Romans 8.28 says that we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose for them. Remember the one who is in control. Many times, and many of you may be feeling like you're losing battles, uh, but be reminded that God will win the war. We have a, a tactical view of things. We're in the trenches, and our vision and perspective is limited. But God has a strategic view. He can see it all. 
Not only do we remember that God is in control, but number two, recognize the source of evil. Satan is the one who brings all evil, all harm and destruction into our lives. Paul refers to this thorn in the flesh as a messenger from Satan to torment him. He recognizes that all evil comes from the evil one, and he knows that God, even though God has allowed it, he never blames God. He holds Satan responsible for it. And we need to remember that Satan comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. God is the one who gives us abundant life. He is our defender, our deliverer. He's our protector, our provider. He's our healer and our helper, and he will always take care of us. If we will only turn to him, look to him, surrender to him, and live obediently to him and his word. Remember the one who is in control, that is God. Recognize the source of all evil, that's Satan. And number three, rely on God's strength in your weakness. Paul came to realize that God had a purpose in this thorn. What Satan meant for evil, God used for good. Three times he pleaded with God. He begged him to remove it, to take it away. He wanted, he wanted that done so desperately. All three times God says, no, you need to learn to lean on me and be content. I want you to imagine this conversation with, with God and Paul. Uh, Paul says, God, would you please take this source of, of irritation out of my life? And God says, no. Well, God, please, please, I, I don't want to live my life with this handicap. No, Paul. God, I'm pleading with you. Take it away. I can't bear this. No, Paul, you need this. It's going to help you be dependent on me through it all. I'm not going to give you what you're asking for here, but I'll give you something even better. I'm going to give you my grace, which is more than enough. It's sufficient for you. And as you keep leaning fully on me, I will shape you and make you into what I want you to be. God's answer is my grace is enough. It's sufficient for you. It's all that you need. Paul came to realize that when I am weak, that is when I'm really strong. See, my weakest moments are the times that I have to rely on God's strength the most. And my weakness, my weakest moments are when my testimony becomes the greatest and has the most impact. Without God, there's no way that I could endure. But I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It takes humility to admit that you have a weakness. It takes humility to admit that you have a sin problem. And it takes humility to admit that you can't overcome it on your own. But when you think about it, that's how God saves us. We have to admit that we're weak, but he is strong. We have to admit that we are lost, but he is the way. He is the only way. He is the way to life everlasting. If you don't know Jesus as your savior, I encourage you to reach out to him. If you're a follower of Jesus, but you're just struggling with fear, doubt, worry, relationship issues, whatever it might be, can you, can you grab hold of this concept that we can do everything through Christ who gives us strength? It's his strength in us. It's his mighty power in us that is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can imagine or ask in our wildest dreams. God is a good God. And Jesus has given us the power, uh, his power, through his spirit that is in us. Let's lean on that spirit. Let's open our hearts to God and let's invite him in, in our daily lives and trust him every step of the way. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives in us. Thank you that the spirit of God who raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in us. I pray that we would live by this motto that I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Everything. There's nothing that we can't do because God, you are able to do impossible things. We know that with you, all things are possible. So God, I pray that we would experience just the realness of your presence, of your power, of your peace in our lives as we look to you, submit to you, follow you, serve you with all of our hearts. We can do all things through you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your, your spirit. Thank you for your goodness that you work all things together for good. And what the enemy means for evil, God, you will turn it for good. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name.
Thank you for joining us tonight.